Hi everyone, it's Peter Schiff. It is Monday, March 28th, 2011. Well, unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties today at shiftradio.com. We had to play a best of episode. AT&T had some problems with the dedicated line that we use uh, to do the radio show. Hopefully, all of it got straightened out and we will have another live episode tomorrow. Uh, but in the meantime, I figured I'd share some words with you on the video blog. I know it's been a while since I did my last one. I was traveling quite a bit, but I am back home now. Anyway, I want to talk first about the economic data that we got out today on personal income and spending for the month of February. Now, the good news, at least the way the media spins it, is that personal spending was up. It was up seven-tenths of one percent. That's actually more than I think the four-tenths of a percent that had been the consensus forecast. Well, why is it good news that Americans spent more money, especially since a lot of us are broke, a lot of Americans have lost all their home equity, uh, many of us are unemployed or are potentially in danger of losing a job, a lot of Americans have a lot of credit card debt, auto loans, mortgage debt, student loans. What we really lack in this country is savings. Uh, so the fact that we spent more money, I think it's hardly something that we should celebrate, especially when you look at the numbers, that the reason we spent more money was because the savings rate dropped rather sharply because incomes for the month of February only rose by, I think it was uh, three-tenths of one percent. Uh, so the additional spending came because we reduced our savings rather than that we increased our incomes. And in fact, if you look at the growth in our incomes in February, it was actually less than even the government admits was the increase in the cost of living during the month. So in other words, despite a real drop in incomes, Americans spent more, not less. And I think the reason that Americans are spending more is because it costs them more to eat. It costs them more to heat their homes or drive their cars. That's really where the additional spending is coming from. It's reflecting a rise in cost of living. I think Americans are spending money they'd rather not spend. Uh, they'd probably rather save a little bit more money, but unfortunately the decision is between saving and eating, and they're choosing eating. But where is all this inflation coming from? It is coming uh, from the Federal Reserve. And even if you look at the numbers uh, in, in that they reported today, you can see an acceleration in even the, 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 the rates of increase in the, in the cost of living that the government reports. And I think that uh, rate of increase is going to accelerate, particularly if you think about what the Federal Reserve is doing. And along those lines, when they reported uh, the, the personal income expenditure numbers on CNBC today, and happened to be watching it, and there was an exchange between Stephen Leisman, who is the chief economist at CNBC, and Rick Santelli, uh, who I like, who has been uh, twice now a guest on the on the Shift Radio uh, show. But when they reported the the numbers, there was a, an exchange, as often there is, between Rick Santelli and Steve Leisman. And Steve Leisman actually started to make fun of people who believe that the U.S. government is going to have difficulty paying its bills, that we face some kind of a sovereign debt crisis or credit crisis because our debts are too large and we can't pay them. And Steve Leisman said, well, that just reflects a complete lack of understanding on the people who are making these arguments because, of course, we can pay our bills. We can print money. We have a printing press. We'll print the money. No problem. Nothing to worry about. Well, Steve, that is exactly what we're worried about. The fact of the matter is I know that the government has a printing press, and I'm counting on them using it. That's the problem. I think that not paying is better than printing. I think creating inflation to pay your bills is worse than admitting that you can't pay them and restructuring your debt. That is the real worry. And as people around the world tune into CNBC and they start to be reminded of this attitude that, hey, who cares how much money we borrow because we can always print money to pay it back. That is going to send shivers uh, through American creditors uh, who own dollars who are not going to be hardened uh, by the idea that they're going to get paid, paid back with monopoly money because that's what happens when you pay your bills with a printing press. And the fact that the chief economist on CNBC thinks this is a good thing, is happy about it, just shows you how poor the understanding is in the mainstream media of uh, inflation and debt and, and, and the problems to an economy uh, from a, a Federal Reserve monetizing debt. Now, I really wanted to talk a little bit about today was about the, the 60 Minutes episode that was on last night. If you missed it, uh, you can see it on the internet. 
But 60 Minutes did a report on American companies uh, moving offshore uh, to lower their tax burden. And, you know, I, this is very uh, timely for me because one of the reasons I was away last week is because I was away in the Caribbean where I am setting up an offshore entity uh, to do business with international customers. Now, I would much rather uh, expand my domestic business and, and service my global clientele through my American company, but I'm not doing that for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is taxes. Yes, I'm going to have much lower taxes by earning money abroad, but lower taxes for me is actually the icing on the cake. The cake is all the regulatory costs that I escape by running my foreign investment business and brokerage firm from offshore rather than running it from the United States. It's certainly inconvenient for me to have to travel out of the country and set up office space and hire people out of the country. I'd rather use my existing business in America, but what I save in regulatory burdens and, and taxes more than makes up for it. Plus, you know, all the regulations take a lot of the fun out of the business. And, you know, you got to enjoy what you do. And I think I'm going to enjoy the business a lot more uh, doing it offshore. But I'm not alone. I mean, I'm, in fact, I'm pretty late to the party of outsourcing because the 60-minute report was all about that. And if you re watch the report, it's like the government is missing this huge pot of money that they, that they should be tapping into. And, you know, one of the things that made me mad about the report is they kept focusing them on the fact that we have a 35% corporate tax rate in the United States. It's actually a lot higher than that. I'm in Connecticut. The corporate tax rate in Connecticut is 7.5. I earn a lot of income in, in California. I'm paying, I think, 9%, 8.9% in California. You know, the state of Illinois has a 9.5% corporate income tax. So most American corporations aren't paying a 35% tax, those of us that are paying taxes. It's more like 42, 43, 44%. And Leslie Stahl showed a town in Switzerland where a lot, of, a lot of American businesses were relocating, where the corporate income tax was 14%. And they said, well, 14% is a lot lower than 35%, which is true, but it's even lower when you compare it to the real corporate tax rate here of 42 43%, depending on what state you happen to be generating your revenue in. And, you know, I thought one of the most interesting aspects of it is that 60 Minutes, instead of questioning the idiocy of having these high corporate tax rates, I mean, corporate taxes should be zero. I mean, that's the best rate. Because then, uh, you know, corporations can reinvest, can grow their earnings, because ultimately the corporations are going to pay out their earnings in salaries or before their earnings, and the individuals will, get, will pay taxes on their salaries, and what's left over, they pay in dividends, and people will pay taxes there. But if the corporation retains the earnings and just invests in expanding the business, why tax them? But um, they, they looked at the fact that some congressmen now were looking at the fact that some of these large corporations had simply moved their headquarters to Switzerland, but all of the people were still in the U.S., and they said, well, we're, we're, we're not going to let you do that, so we're going we're gonna to treat these corporations as if they were U.S. corporations unless they actually move their decision makers overseas. So two of these companies that they featured, as soon as they heard that the government was doing this, they packed up all their executives and shipped them off to Switzerland. So now, not only are, is the U.S. government going to lose revenue on the corporation, but now some of the employees are now moving to Switzerland as well. We are chasing our businesses and our companies out of the country because there are other countries where they're allowed to keep more of what they earn, and it puts them at a competitive advantage. One of the reasons that I want to locate my international brokerage firm outside of America is so I can be competitive with all the other brokerage firms that, that, that if, I, if I had to run my business from America, I wouldn't be. All the paperwork, all the forms, all the oversight would run my costs through the roof. I would have to charge too much. I wouldn't be competitive. And of course, I want to grow the business. I want to expand it rapidly. I want to open a lot of new offices. If I had to do that out of my corporation in America, half of my income, almost half of it, would be paid in taxes. So I wouldn't have all that income to grow my business. But by doing it offshore, where I'm not paying these taxes or paying much lower taxes, depending on where I open up an office, it makes it a lot easier for me to grow and expand my business. Unfortunately, 60 Minutes couldn't connect the dots. All this report was focusing on was how can we get our hands on this money? How can we tax these corporations more so that we can get more income? Instead of focusing on the fact that we are losing companies and we are losing jobs, uh, to the, based on the fact that our taxes are too high, and if we lowered our taxes and reduced our, our, our regulations, we would actually create jobs and improve our economy. Anyway, take care. Bye for now, everybody.